so hi guys welcome back to the channel we are going to start with part 3 of citizenship okay we are we are done with part 1 and part 2 if you have not watched both the parts please go and watch and then we will be continuing with the part 3 now where we ended in part 2 was acquisition of citizenship acquisition of citizenship so what I explained to you was acquisition means how you can acquire or how you can get the citizenship so there were five ways given we are going to see one by one so guys I am referring to quality by election count and as you can see this point the points in this there is so much things written in detail in this but as we are making notes so we will make it shorter so I will leave the space for points already so that we don't write excess of notes we want to write short short notes so what are what are these five points we will try to cover in this much of space space okay we don't have to write everything in details as we are writing short notes we will try to set it in this space okay so the first point is how we can acquire citizenship is first point is by birth okay then second point is by descent third point is by registration okay then fourth point is by naturalization And then fifth point is by incorporation. Of territory. Now I will explain you. And I will know only the important points over here. Okay. We are not going to write everything. So by birth. A person born in India on or after 26 January. But before 1st July is, is, is a citizen of India by birth irrespective of nationality of parents. Now by birth a person can be citizen of India by birth citizen is born between. BETN is between 26 Jan 1950 to 1st July 1987. So if any person is born between this time span can be citizen of India irrespective irrespective of nationality of parents doesn't matter if the doesn't matter if the parents are Indian or not if any citizen is born in India between 26 January 1950 to 1st July 1987 that person is citizen by birth now what is the second point? A person born in India after July 1987. Now this is the first point. Now, now what is second point? Now in this span irrespective of parent the person becomes citizen. Now if what happens if person is born after 1st July 
1987. What happens in this case? Is considered as citizen only if either of parents is citizen of India at the time of birth. Now, if a person is born after 1st July 1987, citizen, that person can be citizen only, citizen only if either of parents are citizen at the time, at time of this person's birth. Okay. Now, this person, in this time span, irris uh, irrespective of nationality of parents, but after 1st July 1987, a person can be Citizen of India only if either of parents, P PSS parents are citizen at the time of the person's birth. Now, the third condition. Further, those born in India on or after 3rd December 2004. Now, those who are born in India on or on or after 3rd December 2004 if some person is born on or after 3rd December 2004 is considered citizen only if both the parents of citizen both the parents are considered citizen only if both here it is either or here it is irrespective okay both parents are citizens okay and children of foreign diplomats in india and any any and enemy aliens cannot acquire indian citizenship by birth now fourth point is the children of foreign diplomats posted in india now foreign diplomats as in as indian diplomats are posted in foreign countries similarly foreign diplomats who are posted in india foreign diplomats now sorry children of of foreign diplomats in India and and enemy aliens and children of enemy aliens cannot acquire cannot acquire Indian citizenship. Okay. Now we will quickly revise. By birth, first, first we will just see ki kon nahi acquire kar sakta. Who cannot acquire? Children of foreign diplomats in India. Okay. Foreign, the children of foreign diplomats who are in India and the children of enemy aliens. Okay, we have seen the concept of enemy aliens that is people belonging to the countries with which India is at war. Okay, so their children and children of foreign diplomats in India cannot acquire Indian citizenship. Okay, done with this point. Now, who can acquire by birth? So there are three points. Citizen, if a, if a person is born between 26 January 1950, to 1st July 1987 then irrespective of nationality of parent the person can be citizen of India by birth. Second if a person is born if a person is born after 1st July 1987 can be citizen only if either either means either mother or father of the person are citizen at the time of birth. And third point is on or after 3rd December 2004. Citizen only a person who is born on or after 3rd December 2004 can be citizen 
only if both the parents are citizen. Okay? So we are done with this. Now we'll see by descent. Now what do you mean by descent? First I'll explain you what do you mean by descent. Descent means origin of person in terms of background. Origin of person in terms of background or nationality. That means by background or by nationality, how can you gain the Indian citizenship? Okay, by or origin or by background or nationality, how can you gain Indian citizenship? That will be explained in acquisition of citizenship by descent. Okay, so a person born outside India on or after 26 January 1950, but before 10th December 1992 is citizen by descent if his father was a citizen of India at the time of his birth. Now again the time span is given. Okay. So I think I should write it more clearly over here. I'll just rub this. Okay. So that you don't get confused. Yes, we were seeing acquiring citizenship by descent. So what time span is given over there? A person born outside. Just highlight this word born outside. Now how the person born outside can be citizen by descent? Okay, so the condition is given. If the person is born outside India on or after on or after 26th January 1950 but before after this but before 10th December 1992. If a person is born after 26 January 1950 but before 1992 but before 10th December 1992 then how can be the person citizen of citizen of India by descent? First condition. If his father was a citizen at the time of his birth. If father was citizen of India at the at time of his birth. When the when the kid was born, if at that point of time his father was citizen of India, then that kid can get the citizenship of India by descent. Okay. The second point is as a, a person born outside India on or after 10th December is considered citizenship. Now we were seeing here before 10th December 1992. Now after 10th December 1992. After if, if a person is born after 10th December 1992 what will, what will be the condition? Either parents is citizen of India. Either of parents should be. Guys, just look at the pattern. In all the conditions, you might be thinking that how confusing is the data. But if you see the pattern, no. First point is always the compulsion case. So this is the compulsion case that father should be. Second is either or and third will be both. Okay? So you will just see. Either, either parent should be citizen. Either parent should be citizen at the time of his birth. We'll not, we are not going to write the entire thing. And third point is from 3rd December. See as I see. From 3rd December 2004 onwards.
a person born outside india shall not be a citizen of india by descent so what from 2004 onwards the rules are changing so a person born outside india will not be the citizen will not be the citizen unless his birth is registered at indian consulate will not be the citizen unless birth is registered at indian at indian consulate shall be accompanied by undertaking in writing from the parents of such minor child that he or she does not hold a passport of another country and the child should not hold the passport of another country and the parents should give this statement in return okay further a minor who is citizen of india by virtue of citizen is and is also citizen of any other country shall cease to be a citizen of india if he does not renounce the citizenship or nationality of another country within 6 months of attaining his full age now the important point here is see now what is happening that when when a child is born they are taking they are registering his birth in indian consulate okay that means he becomes the citizen of india now at this point the the child is citizen of india plus citizen of country in which he is born okay citizen of india and citizen of country in which he is born okay now what happens is this condition is valid till he attain full age that means if we consider india so 18 years so this is the condition till the till the child attains full age now after attaining full age the child or the person will have two option either to either continue with indian citizenship or continue with citizenship of country of country in which he is currently residing theek hai now 18 saal ka hua tak aur if till that person attains full age us uske paas mein do citizenship hai because this two citizenships are because uh, when he was born his parent has registered him as indian citizen at at the indian consulate okay now after he attains full age uske paas do option rahenge या तो इंडियन सिटीजनशिप के साथ में कंटिन्यू करो और या तो जो कंट्री में वो डिसाइड कर रहा है उसके सिटीजनशिप के साथ में कंसिडर ओके गाइस सो आई वाज एक्सप्लेनिंग यू दिस कि जब तक जो पर्सन है वो 18 इयर्स का या फुल एज वी आर कंसीडरिंग 18 इयर्स बिकॉज इन इंडिया वी कंसीडर 18 इयर्स एज अ स्टैंडर्ड एज ओके सो जब तक वो 18 इयर्स का नहीं होता उसके पास में दो सिटीजनशिप रहेंगी इंडियन सिटीजनशिप बिकॉज उनके पेरेंट्स ने रजिस्टर किया है 
विद द इंडियन कॉन्सुलेट एंड द सिटीजनशिप ऑफ कंट्री जहाँ पर वो रह रहा है आउटसाइड इंडिया ओके बट जैसे ही ही बिकम्स ऑफ फुल एज ही विल हैव टू ऑप्शन आइदर टू कंटिन्यू विद इंडियन सिटीजनशिप और टू कंटिन्यू विद द सिटीजनशिप ऑफ द कंट्री इन विच दैट पर्सन इज रिसाइडिंग ओके तो अगर उनको इंडियन सिटीजनशिप के साथ में कंटिन्यू करना है तो यू विल हैव टू गिव अप द फॉरेन कंट्री के सिटीजनशिप ओके और अगर फॉरेन कंट्री के सिटीजनशिप के साथ में कंटिन्यू करना है तो यू विल हैव टू गिव अप द इंडियन सिटीजनशिप ओके सो दिस इज ऑल द पॉइंट्स अंडर सिटीजनशिप बाय डिसेंट नाउ वी विल सी सिटीजनशिप बाय रजिस्ट्रेशन सिटीजनशिप बाय रजिस्ट्रेशन सिंपली मीन्स कि रजिस्ट्रेशन करवा के आप सिटीजनशिप कैसे एक्वायर करते कर सकते हो हाउ कैन यू एक्वायर सिटीजनशिप बाय रजिस्ट्रिंग योर योर सेल्फ ओके सो सिटीज अब थर्ड पॉइंट इज बाय रजिस्ट्रेशन Now, in central government may the central government may on application register as a citizen of India any person if he belongs to any of the following categories. Now here seven categories are given. So central government can register a person as Indian citizen if he. He, if he is following any of the categories, okay. Now first category, a person of Indian origin who is ordinary resident in India for seven years before making application. So the first point is a person should be of Indian origin. Indian origin means either parents or grandparents, or he himself is a citizen of so should. Uh, someone from the blood relation should be citizen of india okay plus he should be ordinarily resident of india for 7 years before making application before making an app application this person should be living in india for 7 years okay and the person should be of indian origin now second point is the person of indian origin who is ordinarily resident in any country or place outside undivided india okay the person should be of indian origin plus ordinarily resi resident in um, plus ordinary resident in any country or place outside undivided india okay should be living in any country or place undivided india so the person should be of indian origin and should be ordinarily resident in any country okay but the important point here is outside undivided india that means india before division whatever was the before div division whatever was the territory of india in that territory the person should be ordinarily residing but he should be of indian origin okay now the third point is a person who is married to indian citizen married to indian citizen 
and re ordinarily resident in India for 7 years before making application plus resident for 7 years ok fourth point minor children of person who are citizen of India minor children of citizen of India ok now fifth person of full age and capacity whose parents are registered as citizen of India person of full age as we have seen in the earlier point whose parents should be citizen of India that means the parents are citizen of India but a person along with a uh, person was living in some other country and now as but as the parents are citizen of India he also wants to acquire the he or she also wants to acquire the citizen of India so in this case person of full age and capacity who is whose parents are citizen of India person of full age and capacity who or either of his parents now in this case person of full age and capacity is similar and either either in this case both the parents should be citizen of India and in this case either of the parents should be should be registered as citizen of India a person of full age and capacity who or either of his parents were earlier citizen of independent India ok either of his parents should be citizen of independent India and ordinarily resident in India for 12 months ordinarily resident in India for 12 months before making an application and the last point is a person of full age and capacity who has been registered as an overseas citizen of India card India card holder for 5 years and who is ordinarily resident in India for 12 months before making application for registration so the last point is a person of full age and capacity full age and capacity person of full age and capacity registered as overseas citizen registered as overseas citizen card holder for 5 years and ordinary residing in India for 12 months ok in this condition he should be full agent capacity registered as overseas card holder and for 5 years he should have that card and for uh, for ordinary resident for 12 months ok now the last point is a person shall be deemed to be of Indian origin if he or either his parents were born in undivided India or in such territory which became part of India after 15th August 1947 okay so what they are saying is a person shall deemed to be Indian origin if he or his parents was born in undivided India or such territory which became part of India after August 15 1947 okay now citizenship by naturalization okay 
so what they are saying is central government may on application grant certificate of naturalization to any person not being illegal migrant if he possesses the following qualification so the first point itself is they are not giving citizenship by naturalization to illegal migrants okay we'll write it properly here so my citizenship by naturalization so they are not giving citizenship by natu naturalization to illegal migrants okay now next point is so what are the qualifications to get citizenship by naturalization so the first qualification is that he is not subject or citizen of any country where citizen of india are prevented from becoming subjects or citizen of that country by naturalization now if in any country if a indian person is not allowed to be a citizen should by naturalization in the citizen of that country will not be allowed for example if i am an indian for example if i am not allowed to acquire citizenship by naturalization in australia for example if i am a indian person and if i am not allowed to acquire citizenship by naturalization in australia the same thing will happen with a citizenship with with the citizen of australia in india the citizen of australia will also not be allowed to acquire indian indian citizenship by naturalization okay i hope you got this point so so the first point is he that he is not subjected to citizen of any country where citizen of india is prevented from becoming the person should not will write it in simple words should not be from a country where where indian are prevented from acquiring citizenship by naturalization okay now the second point is if he is a citizen of any country he takes or renounces the citizen of citizenship of that country in the event of his application for indian citizenship being accepted now what is the second point is saying a person can get citizenship by migrate uh, naturalization that in the condition that if he is a citizen of any country okay if that person is a citizenship of any country he undertakes to renounce the citizenship of that country in the event of application for indian citizenship being accepted now i'll explain you this as i told you if i am a citizen of 
US. Okay. Now, if I want to acquire Indian Now, I am wanting to acquire Indian citizenship, but India does not allow dual citizenship. If you are an Indian citizen, you cannot be a citizen of any other country. So, in order to get Indian citizenship, if you are giving up your US citizenship, then, then what happens? Then, your Indian citizenship will be approved by naturalization okay so that is the point they are explaining over here to make application for Indian citizenship you have to renounce the renounce the renounce the citizen renounce the citizen ship of other country in order to get Indian citizenship okay now third point that he has either resided in India or been in service of government of India either resided or been in service of government of India or partly one or partly the other throughout the period of 12 months immediately preceding the date of application. So if the person has resided either resided in India or been in service of government of India or both for 12 months before making an application then that person can apply for the citizenship of naturalization third point is very easy fourth point that during 14 years immediately preceding the said period of 12 months moving on to next page he has either resided in india or been in service of government in india or partly one and partly the other for periods amounting in the aggregate not less than 11 years so what they are saying during 14 years immediately preceding the set period of 12 months before this set period of 12 months 14 years that person should have decided in India and he has either resided in India or been in service of government. The same, the same factor here, either in service of India or being or resided in India for periods amounting in aggregate not less than 11 years, max to max 14 years and minimum 11 years. Okay, then fifth that he is of good character then that he has adequate knowledge of language specified in 8th schedule to the constitution in 8th schedule what all the languages are there he should have knowledge of those languages so that he can come when he comes to India he can communicate with people of languages okay now that in event of certificate of naturalization being granted to him he intends to reside in India or enter into or enter into or continue in service under government in India or under international organization of which India is member or under a society, company or body of a person established in India. So what the last point is saying that in short he should have intention to reside in 
India. You cannot take Indian citizenship just like that for fun. You should have intention to stay in India. And the example of intention is given over here. Either you should be working with government of India or international organization. So you should have intention to stay with India. However, the government of India may waive all or any above conditions for naturalization in case of a person who has rendered distinguished service to science, philosophy, art, literature, world peace or human progress. Every naturalized citizen must take an oath of allegiance to the constitution of India. So, this all conditions can be waived off or this all conditions will not be applicable to a person who, who has rendered distinguished service science philosophy art literature world peace or human progress for example if a person if there is a person who has won Nobel Prize peace prize and now if that person is wanting to acquire Indian citizenship now this be this will be a prestige for India that such a, a distinguished person is wanting to acquire Indian citizenship that we uh, that will be a pride for India so in this case Indian government will not follow all these protocols they will they will consider him as a distinguished person and then they will provide him the citizenship okay now by incorporation of territory the last point is by in corporation of territory how we can acquire citizenship of by incorporation of territory if any foreign territory become part of India government of India specifies the person who among the people of the territory shall be citizens of India such persons become citizen of India from the notified date for example when Pondicherry became a part of India the government of India issued citizenship of Pondicherry Order 1962 under Citizenship Act 1955. Okay, so the simple is if foreign territory becomes part of India, in this case, government will specify who among the people of this foreign territory will be citizen of India. And the last point is special provision as to citizenship of persons covered by Assam Accord. The Citizenship Amendment Act 1985 added the following special provision as to citizenship of person covered by Assam Accord. Okay. So the sixth point we will be dealing with is citizenship. Assam Accord So what happened in Assam Accord? All the persons of Indian origin who came to Assam before 1st January 1966 from Bangladesh who have been ordinarily resident in Assam since the date to their entry into Assam shall be deemed to citizens of India as from the 1st January 1996. Every person of Indian origin who came to Assam after 1st January 1966 
but before 25th March 1971 from Bangladesh. Okay, I'll explain you point by point. We'll just make some space here. So what is happening in Assam Accord, okay? So the first point is all person of Indian origin who came to Assam before 1st January people of Indian origin came to India from Bangladesh on what date? 1st January 1966 okay who have been ordinarily resident in Assam since the date to their entry into Assam shall be deemed to be citizen of India as from 1st January 1966 okay and they arrived on 1st January 1966 and from then they are being living in Assam okay shall be deemed to be the citizens of India as from 1st January 1966 so they will be considered to be citizen of India from 1st January 1966 second point every person of Indian origin who came to Assam after 1st January okay after 1st January 1966 but before 25th March 1971 from Bangladesh the important point is there this is going between India and Bangladesh and who has been ordinarily resident in Assam since the date of his entry who has been detected to a foreigner shall register himself and if they are detected as foreigners they should register themselves okay such a registered person shall be deemed to citizen of India for all purpose as from the date of expiry period of 10 years from the date of detect detection as foreigner. But the intervening period of 10 years he shall have same rights and obligation as the citizen of India except right to vote. Okay. Now a person who has came to India before 1st January sorry uh, came to India on 1st January shall be deemed to be they will not be considered as citizen of India and this person who have come after uh, 1st uh, January 1966 and before 25th March 1971 will be will be considered as foreigners and they should register themselves but they will be given period of 10 years and after and in this period of 10 years if they do not register themselves they will be deemed to be the citizen of India that means they will not be considered as citizen of India okay so guys we are done with this and we will see the loss of citizenship single citizenship and overseas citizenship of India in the next lecture.